South Asia and the Pacific region, physical geography. So we're focusing on chapter three now, and this is the first uh, section in Southeast Asia. We're gonna learn about the major landforms in Southeast Asia. We're gonna find out about the climate and vegetation and examine how people use the land and resources. So the land of Southeast Asia, both there's a mainland and an island part. And if you look here, the mainland is composed of, over here we have Burma or Myanmar, it's kind of a little bit off there, but then we got Thailand, Laos, up here Vietnam, all the way down, and then Cambodia. Then we have Malaysia, which is a part of island and mainland as well. Down here we got Singapore, or Malaysia. Uh, we got Malaysia here and here. We got Singapore down here. We got Indonesia all over the place here, a little bunch of little islands. Brunei is right there, and then the Philippines over here. So that's all of Southeast Asia. Now the mainland's mostly covered by forests and mountains. People live mainly in the river valleys because that's where the fertile land is and it's actually flat enough to grow crops. The island part, that's formed primarily by the volcanic, uh, volcanic process uh, of the tectonic plates bumping up against one another and this is where the ring of fire is too, so it's very tectonically active. In terms of climate and vegetation, just about all of Southeast Asia is in the tropics, so it's warm all year round. The mainland area is tropical wet and dry it changes depending upon the monsoons and then most of the island areas is, is tropical wet all year round. And there's two different monsoons um, and they affect the area and there's a Pacific one and an Indian one. Both bring rain but uh, but there's even a monsoon rain one or winter one that brings rain to some island areas as well. So it's uh, a lot of monsoons and really uh, that has a major impact on them. The effects of a tropical climate, that most of the area was tropical rainforest. This is, it's the second largest rainforest in the world after, uh, in this area after uh, the Amazonian rainforest. Typhoon, typhoons do happen in the area and cause damage, unfortunately. And how do they use the land? Well, most of the people in the region make their living by farming. There's two main types, uh, subsistence and commercial farming. And now, subsistence farming is basically farming so you have food that you can eat. And commercial farming is a larger scale plantation style farming that uh, raises crops for livestock and for the world market as well. In terms of farming, over 40% are the people are involved in farming. They live and farm in the river valleys and the lowlands and the plains. Coffee, tea, and rubber are three main crops, uh, three main cash crops, and then the main food crops are rice, sugar cane, soybeans, and fruit. Now that image there, same image here. It's so important, I used it twice. Rice is very important in this area. It's, it needs a warm, moist climate to grow. It, it grows in uh, flooded rice fields called paddies. If you look, they try and, because uh, a lot of it's kind of mountainous they, and hills, uh, they actually build up the land to enclose the water so they can plant the rice in those areas there. And it's uh, both a subsistence and a cash crop as well because people do use it uh, not only to eat, uh, they grow enough of it that they can sell some as well. In terms of rainforest, there's a variety of plants and animals. Large portions of rainforest have been cut down to create farmlands, and this is something they're trying to balance between uh, development and the environment. Bamboo is a fast-growing grass that's used in construction, and that's uh, yeah, that's pretty tall, and it's a kind of woody stem, so it's solid. Used in bridges, houses, bunches of other things as well. In terms of mineral resources, that's a picture of a ruby from Myanmar. Uh, the region has lots of oil and natural gas as well, and they're still developing those resources. Now, the second section is Australia and New Zealand in terms of the physical geography. We're going to find out how, why Australia and New Zealand have unique physical environments. We're going to learn about Australia's physical geography and explore New Zealand's physical geography as well. So it's pretty unique because if you look there, um, since Australia and New Zealand are far away from the other continents, they have many plants and animals that are really special. Uh, Australia and New Zealand are in the Southern Hemisphere, so their seasons are opposite of ours, so it's uh, coming up on springtime now, down there. And they have, when I say unique plants and animals, this would be, these would be some examples, and you got the kangaroo, and things like that, uh, you got bunches of different animals that are marsupials, most of the mammals are marsupials, uh, which are animals that keep their, uh, keep their young in a pouch. Moving plates of rock, the theory of plate tectonics says that New Zealand and Australia were once a part of the African landmass. If you look over here, you can see them uh, once a part over here. And then eventually they broke off. 
and so he kind of got off to the side there. That's that's where it was. But it was once all one big landmass and broke off with the with the rest of the Indo-Australian plate, Australian plate, several hundred million years ago, and are still moving a couple inches a year, an inch or so a year. Now over time, little things uh, like birds losing the ability to fly happen. That's a picture of an emu. It's kind of a big bird, but in, unable to fly. There's kiwis as well. Those are on, in, uh, in uh, New Zealand. Now, Australia's physical geography, Australia is the Earth's smallest continent. Most of the people live on the southeast and east coast. And you can see that from the dots here. Each of those dots is a thousand people. Most of Australia is dry, but some of it's able to be farmed, particularly in this region over here. New Zealand's physical geography, it's made up of two major islands. And uh, the two major islands are the North and the South Island. And it was created from volcanoes uh, where the Pacific and Indo-Australian Australian plates meet. It has a pretty mild climate. Uh, it's, it's cooler than Australia, though, uh, because it's full, further from the, uh, from the equator. So it, uh, it actually gets rain since most of it's by the ocean. So you can see that from the amount of uh, average rainfall. And you can get an idea of the wind blowing this way as well. Now, the North Island, geologically active, has geysers and volcanoes. People use geothermal power or geothermal energy to make power. And Auckland's the biggest city in New Zealand. That's on the North Island. South Island has a mountain range called the Southern Alps. It has glaciers and fjords. These are uh, things that are carved out by glaciers. These sort of uh, just things you would see in Scandinavia as well. And people uh, raise sheep and cattle on the plains. There are some plains there too. Now, in terms of comparing Australia and New Zealand, both populations live along the coast. Most people live in cities. They grow similar crops, raise sheep and cattle. And they have some of the, uh, some of the same resources, mostly the same resources. Uh, but they do have different climates. And New Zealand has higher mountains, and certainly New Zealand is also significantly smaller. Last section, Pacific Islands, physical geography. Objectives, examine the features of highlands and low islands, learn about the three main island groups, find out what kind of climate and vegetation the islands have, and discover how land is used in the Pacific Islands. So this is a, an image of, that shows partially Southeast Asia, but all the major, uh, major Pacific Islands as well. So it's kind of small, but you can get an idea here, down here, Australia, New Zealand, for a amount of perspective for where they are. We got Melanesia. Those are uh, the Black Islands is what they're called. Uh, that's what melon means. Uh, Micronesia, small islands, and Polynesia, and many islands. Now, highlands and low islands. Highlands have been formed by volcanoes that are fertile soil, so people can farm there. Low islands are formed by coral atolls, and what has happened is that basically, uh, normally from volcanic collapse, and over time, there's been it's gone under the ocean after its magma chamber, I think, has collapsed, and then coral has built up over time over where the uh, where the volcano was originally. And bit by bit, it gets up above the actual ocean surface, and then it starts collecting sand uh, where that happens, but it's kind of in an enclosed area. Reefs form, and then sand accumulates, as I said. Most people live on high islands since they're bigger and have more fresh water. That's important. On low islands, people fish a lot and grow taro root. They, they fish a lot on and probably grow taro root on the high islands too, but still, they, they need to do more of that on the low islands just to be able to eat. This is an example of a high island. Melanesia, Micronesia, and Polynesia. Melanesia is made up is mainly high islands and includes Papua New Guinea, uh, which is one of the the half the second uh, biggest island in the world. Uh, there's Irian, Java, and Papua New Guinea share share an island, and so um, some uh, Micronesia's islands are very small. You get that from the micro part, and Polynesia's large uh, group of islands includes Hawaii. Uh, these have rain and are primarily volcanoes. Climate and vegetation on the Pacific Islands. Now, uh, Pacific Islands are hot all year round, but uh, not extremely hot because they have the ocean winds. They're really pretty warm consistently to hot. Some have wet and dry seasons depending upon the way the direction is going, but uh, the low islands have little vegetation, high islands have more vegetation and tropical rainforests. Natural resources. There are few resources, but uh, but the coconut palm is, is probably the most important one. Those are That's an image of some coconuts that are ripening. Some cash crops, uh, such as sugar and copra, which is dried coconut, are, and that's used in a lot of different projects. And this is, uh, they're drying coconut out here to be used and make, made into copra later. It can be used in soaps and a variety of other things too. 
And tourism is really important. This is someplace I would love to go. This is Bora Bora in, uh, by Tahiti. Uh, natural beauty, you get the idea. It's, uh, it's just very uh, attractive, you can see. Uh, I would love to go swimming in that area. And it still is developing. This is an industry, though. So, And that's it. We are done.